hello my people and welcome back to the channel i think this is the first video i will be making since my arrival from china after my graduation of my master's degree from china and this is the first video i'll be making on the channel and i'm so happy to be back and before i say anything i would like to appreciate all my subscribers that wished me well that reached out to me congratulating me on my master's degree graduation thank you so much i really appreciate thank you so much god bless you all so i am back in the country i'm back in the country and i've resumed work last week at my office in abuja federal ministry of agriculture i think most of you don't know that i'm an agriculture officer with ministry of agriculture so i just created this channel to serve as a way of dishing out quality information about farming to, to uh, our farmers and helping farmers to achieve success in agriculture so i've started my work i've resumed back to office and also on the other side i've also resumed my whole personal uh, business as an agri consultant uh, helping farmers and helping people to set up farm farm establishment uh, input supply and all the rest so i'm good to be back i'm back in nigeria so if you have any business in agriculture you can just holler at your boy so i'll be there to offer you the best of the service thank you so much and if you are watching for the first time this channel is dedicated to promote sustainable and profitable agriculture my name is Laura Lushora Lawa. I'm an agri consultant. I'm a farmer by training. Uh, I'm a farmer by education and I'm a farmer by practice. So on today's episode, I'll be talking about a very, very important uh, aspect of plant, uh, oil palm farming. It's a very, very common question. Uh, common question. Uh, many people usually reach out to me to ask this kind of question. So when I think of uh, making uh, this video to educate people and to serve as a source of guidance for uh, people who want to go into oil palm farming. So and the question is, uh, what is the output level? Many people come to me uh, as a lawal, hello, uh, please, I want to set up an oil palm plantation, but I want to know what the amount of uh, palm oil I can get from an hectare of land. What is the uh, yield of uh, tenera palm? What is the level? What is the ton of fresh uh, uh, palm uh, bunch I can get from an hectare? And so on and so forth. So on today's uh, episode, on today's video, I will be making this video to address uh, and talk about the factors that determine uh, the level of your output of uh, oil palm plantation the factors that determine the output and the quantity of the produce you'll be able to get from an hectare of oil palm plantation. So having said that, before we dive in, I would like to make some clarification and talk about a little aspect that will, that will lead us into the point to for us to understand it better. So before I listed and explained the factors that we have to take note of there are, there are a lot of factors but I'll, I'll be talking about five important uh, of them so before we go on i would like to make to give a very very good information a very very important information about how the whole palm tree operates so oil palm tree is a very very unique tree it's unlike an other permanent crop that produce that have season like cashew that have season of production oil palm produce all year round right but there's another interesting fact interesting part of the oil palm that oil palm have four production cycle four production cycle in its lifetime and there is no way you can put a peg to it that okay an oil palm uh oil palm tenera oil palm will give you this so, so, so amount of ton per hectare throughout its uh, throughout its uh, production cycle throughout its lifetime like life cycle so because oil palm have four production cycle and each of these production cycle have different level of production rate so to start with the first production level of oil palm 
start from the fourth year when, when your when your oil palm started uh, production to the tenth year this is the first production level and at this level your palm tree they are still growing and they they are still getting to be stable in production in the first year the production you'll be getting the the, the bunches will not be as that full they will not have so much oil and all the rest you know just like a goat giving birth to in the first time they normally give back to, to one so they are still acclimatizing the, to the production cycle so from this from the four year to the six uh, to the ten, uh, tenth year which will last for about six years of production we'll be looking at uh, from between eight ton to twelve ton per hectare which is still which is still good that is the first production cycle from the tenth year to 25 years this is the this is the cycle whereby the oil palm oil palm uh, tree is getting its production right and at this point the production cycle at uh, the production level will be increasing drastically and at this point we'll be looking at from between 14 tons per hectare to 18 tons per hectare as you can see the production will be on a very rapid increase so now the third production cycle which is at the place whereby the production will be at an equilibrium it will be very very stable the production will be very very stable and this will last for a very few uh, time it will it will last between the, the 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 year of 25 years to 30 years of age so when your palm tree is at 25 to 30 years the production will be stable it will not it will not be increasing again the production uh, level will not be increasing again so at this point you'll be having around 20 tons per hectare and it will be very very stable you will not be noticing any increments any increments in your production you'll be having 20 around 20 tons per hectare so from 30 years downward that is when the production of your tree will start declining so as, as you can see now so if you look at this four circle there's no way you can put a figure to it so but different circle have different level of production so having said that let's get to the main uh the main point of today's video so uh just like any other crop there are so many factors that determine your level of productivity and oil palm is not an exception oil palm is not an exception there are so many factors that will determine how productive your crop will be so but for this video we'll be talking about oil palm in particular so we'll be talking about five of the most important factors that will determine the productivity and the output of your uh, oil palm trees the first point i'll be talking about is variety your production or your success or your profitability depends solely on the type of variety you are planting on your farm so let's get it right now assuming somebody plants uh, a dura which is the local species the natural form and somebody is planting the tenera, the hybrid. As we all know, tenera produce more oil, while the dura produce more shell, because the mesocarp is thin. The part of the the the, the, the fruit that produce the red oil is very thin. Likewise, the the kernel is also small. What is big in the dura is the shell. So now, when you plant, when you plant uh, the tenera hybrid, that is where you can achieve. All these are uh, eight tons, ten tons, fifteen tons. I talked about before. That is when you can achieve that. If you plant the dura species, you will not go beyond five tons. There is no way you will go beyond five tons. At most six tons, you will do six tons per hectare. So your success or your production level depend largely on the variety you planted. So that is why you have to be very, very careful whenever you are setting up your a new planting, a new plantation. 
because if you make the mistake of buying from all this roadside uh all this roadside seed fender that will be telling you oh, i'm selling super gene on facebook and they deceive you they take your money and they give you dura the most dangerous part of it is that you will never know until after five years that your tree is not producing because dura will not start producing at three years like tenera so until after five years six years seven years when they start producing and there's a very there's one common saying in the oil palm industry that by their seed we can know them there's no way you can differentiate between a dura seedling and a tenera seedling until this both of them come comes into production then you observe the acid so that's the only way you can differentiate but so it is very very important very very important don't try to cut corner always make sure you buy seed from a trusted source when establishing your uh, oil palm plantation another uh, factor that is also important that determine the level of your productivity and the level of your output is the climatic condition. So when I talk about climatic condition, I'm actually talking about the agroecological zone. Because oil palm is not, is not like maize that can be grown everywhere. Oil palm is not, is not uh, all this staple food that can be grown virtually everywhere. You cannot grow oil palm in, in a greenhouse because it will actually grow tall. So now, and tree crop like this have a go ecological zone where they do well, where they thrive well. Because you'll be planting in an open field, you cannot plant it on the in the greenhouse. So it requires some level of rainfall per year. It requires some level of sunshine per year. So and different areas of the world have different level of all these parameters. So make sure you are not planting oil palm outside its agroecological zone. In Nigeria, for example, out of our 36 states, only 22 states or thereabouts can oil palm can survive and produce economically. It is not it is not that you plant oil palm in Sokoto with with having uh, putting water or anything that it will not grow. It will grow, but it will not produce economically for you. It's just like you you are taking date palm date palm is a drought uh, is, a, is a is a kind of desert plant is a desert crop which that love a very dry uh, condition to grow taking it to a rainforest to grow it will grow but it will not produce economically it will not produce it will not yield so that's just it you have to look at where you want to set up your farm the next factor which is the third factor I'll be talking about is the soil type and the nutrient management. Just like human beings, we eat food to survive and to grow. Same thing for our plant, same thing for our crop. So if you have a very good soil and you are putting, you are applying the right level of fertilizer at the right time, then this one will enhance your productivity. You cannot compare yourself with somebody who established an oil palm on an average soil that is not so fertile and also the person is not applying fertilizer. Fertilizer is crop food. You supply nutrients and then the product you'll be getting will also increase. The fourth point I'll be talking about is the issue of farm management and this encompasses many many things. When I talk about farm management I'm talking about weeding I'm talking about fertilizer application, I'm talking about pest control, I'm talking about disease control. How well do you manage your farm? For example, wheat, as we all know, will not only make your farm to be clumsy and uh, to be awkward, it will fight for nutrients with your plant, it will invite pests and diseases to your farm. So when you weed your farm regularly, you make your farm uh, neater. It makes your 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 crop to do well. They have more access to to sunlight. They have more access to nutrients. Even if you are applying fertilizer, those fertilizer will get to the crop. They will not be fighting it 
fighting together with the weed for for the nutrient so nutrient management within irrigation all this encompasses farm management so it depends on how well you manage your farm that will determine the level of the production or the level of output you'll be getting from the farm there's no two way about it garbage in garbage out if you put in effort if you manage your farm very well you weed you apply fertilizer you do irrigation you do all the pest and disease control then definitely all this all this effort you are putting in will pay off and will show in your production it will show in your output definitely and the last but not the least is about planting population so whenever you are establishing your farm make sure you plant optimum population use the appropriate spacing of nemeter by nemeter triangular which you will be having close to 140 pound per hectare so if you're having less than 140 if you're having 110 which is very very small that means you are you are using a wider, wider space than nine meter by nine meter and this means that you'll be having less population on an hectare which means that you are having less tree to produce definitely this also will affect your productivity because instead of you to be having around 133 or 135 tree per hectare you are having on 100 so it's only 100 that will be producing and you cannot compare the product production from a well-established uh, tree a well-established plantation of 135 tree to an 100 tree the production will not be the same so these are the factors that will determine the level at which at which uh, your production will be what you will be able to get it all depends on all these listed factors so i hope you've got a uh, value from this video you've learned one thing or the, and the other and i think i've tried my best to shed more light on this uh, particular topic and if you got value from this video kindly give it a like share with your friends and if you have any other question uh comments or you want me to to share more information on this topic or any other cultural topic kindly drop it in the comment section then we take it from there and if you are watching for the first time you've not subscribed to the channel kindly click on subscribe button to have access to more of my videos all we do on this channel is all about profitable and sustainable agriculture. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you on my next video.